So welcome everybody um, to, to the uh, presentation of our work um, about the empirical investigation of the personalization factors on TikTok. Um, let me get started. So um, first of all, I want you to introduce you to the need for recommendation systems as we figured alongside our research that the, that we, there is a need for those systems because of the huge amounts of data that we currently have within the internet and there's simply no way a human could possibly manage this amount. So you have the need for those systems, but simultaneously you also introduce a lot of drawbacks and that's why we figured um, this research on recommendation systems and how they actually work is super important. Um, about TikTok itself, I'm pretty sure everybody of you knows TikTok. It's one of the fastest growing social media platforms. Um, where you can share and upload with short videos. And what is most interesting, which is why we decided to investigate the recommendation system is because there, is, there are many suggestions that the key feature of TikTok success is its algorithm to um, distribute content. So, but despite all those different folk theories, many media articles and blog posts, there's a clear research gap in that actually focus on, on an empirical investigation of the recommendations system actually doing some scientific work and that's why where we contributed in that sense with two things first of all we developed a methodology for conducting a user-centric algorithm audit of tiktok's recommendation system by which we then created a bot product basically created a bot that was able to interact with the, uh, the user feed and we did the first audit that actually examines explicit factors or as I mentioned, for scientific audit that ex uh, examined explicit factors such as the language and location, like feature, follow feature, and video re rate. Even though I have to mention that video re rate is something that uh, we named ourselves. It's basically for how long a user watches a certain video. Um, so based on some related work on recommendation systems and most importantly, also information that was published by TikTok themselves about the workings of their algorithm, we created six hypotheses saying that if one user in a pair of identical users interacts with its feed in a certain way, while the other doesn't, this feed of the, or the feed of both users will change and this diversion will continue to do so over time. And there are certain factors, especially those which we tested, that have greater impact than others. And as a user interacts with a specific post, posts in a certain way, that user will be served more of the posts that it interacted with. And then also, as one of the user, um, two users interacts with its feed, um, we propose that the number of um, views, likes, and so on, so basically the engagement rate of those posts that would be served will become more niche. It will be, those numbers will decrease. And lastly, if specifically language and location specific, we propose that depending on the location and language, the content would be very different that is served to users. So about our methods, about our, the data collection, as I mentioned, we wanted to empirically test the influence of those um, different factors I mentioned on the recommendation system. And um, we then figured that the uh, SOC puppet auditing would be the right way to go. So in order to actually fulfill this, we created a, our own web-based bot, which was then able to interact with TikTok um, uh, as close as a human would by initializing Chrome session, accessing the TikTok website, then logging in, um, even though we had to do this verification step here manually, then scroll through a number of batches. Um, although, so batches, we call batches always the number of 30 posts because when you access TikTok on the website, um, it will always preload 30 posts until you scroll down and then would preload another 30 posts. And then eventually the bot would interact with this feed in in the name of a certain user in terms of liking and so on. And here on the right, you can see our technical infrastructure. So we have five different local machines who were all accessing TikTok through proxies. And um, every machine would run our program, which would consist of two bot programs being executed in parallel and then logging in and doing all the stuff and scrolling through the feeds. And once the experiment was done on each laptop, it would store or it will always store the data on a remote database. So about the general experiment design, um, so we had, as I mentioned, four different factors that we tested. For every factor, we had one experimental group consisting of different 
scenarios and every scenario was uh, run 20 times in order to have some consistency of our data. For some of the last scenarios um, of every group, we reset the cookies because we figured it might um, establish an even stronger environment or equal, more equal in every run. But um, unfortunately, this resetting of the cookies made our bots detectable and eventually TikTok then blocked blocked those. So we excluded those scenarios from our analysis. But basically what we do, did, as I mentioned, we always had two users um, for every test scenario. One being the active user actually engaging with the with its feed, and the other one would simply do nothing but scroll through the same number of um, batches, see the same number of posts, and we followed this approach, which is quite common in in the research area, because this would allow us to compare those two uh, users, and then specifically uh, specifically figure out the difference between the feeds of those two users, and attribute the difference to the tested factor. Um, now about our data analysis approach so we followed four approaches as i just mentioned we compared the difference between two two feeds using the chart index then we also had a look at the development of the post metrics so as i mentioned the engagement rate which would be determined by views and so on then the reappearance of hashtags sounds and country creators based on the post the user would see and we also had a look at the feed similarity in terms of analyzing the hashtags that would reappear for a certain user in order to see how similar does this feed become. As you probably have guessed, um, within the sock puppet auditing, especially in our case in this experiment, we also had to control against noise. So uh, there were so certain sources of noise, like location, device settings, and random content recommendation, recommendation, which is based on the design choices from TikTok in their system in order to tackle the filter bubble. But you can read about those in, in our paper for more detail. But what I want to point out here is the, are those two figures. Um, they actually display the same scenarios, but kind of different data, as you can guess. But on the left side, you see the, the original data where you see those huge drops. And we figured that those drops occur across all our scenarios and are particularly interesting because they always occur around the weekend. And then we figured that those might be related to software release because they were quite consistent so we decided to average those out in order to account for them and that's exactly what you then see on figure two now um about our location so i will go now through all the different scenarios um so language and location we created four different ones um where the bot, bot only collected data and had no interaction but as you can see here in the table so the settings and terms of what, from which country and in which language the, the bots would access TikTok differed. And what is interesting, so basically we created those heat maps and our results clearly show there's um, that location and language do influence the, rec the recommended content on TikTok. And what is more interestingly interesting, um, which you can see in figure four and especially in this figure five is um, that actually location is a, lo a lot stronger than language in terms of influencing the content. Because here you can see, for instance, that user 109 um, has a lot of, uh, comparing it to a lot of other users where you can see, well, basically all of them access um, from the same country, but in different languages. But the biggest overlap is with user 132, even though they have different languages. About the like feature here, we created 11 different test scenarios um, and they differed in the way users would pick post um, to, to like. And again, our results showed clear influence of liking a video in terms of um, influencing the content that is recommended to a user. What, but what is particularly interesting here is that we created those certain scenarios, which you may have seen before on the slide, where we had users being um, artificially having artificial profiles, which are defined by a set of hashtags. And whenever the user would stumble across a post, including this hashtag, it would engage. And we figured here that personas def by, defined by very common hashtags did actually not converge very much. Now about the follow feature, this one is pretty straightforward. We had six different test scenarios where again, we had for every test scenario, two users, one, one of them being the active one and um, actually following a content creator and um, they follow a, um, um, a content creator every other round. 
Um, and then we also saw a very clear indication of an influence following certain content creators. And what is particularly interesting here in figure six is that you can see the active user actually encountered less variance in different content creators than, than its twin user, the control one, which is below it. Um, last, about our last um, group of tests, the video view rate, we again created 10 different ones, five um, that randomly selected posts and the other one based on the personas as we did for the like feature. However, here the percentage of how much a user would actually, or the bot would actually watch a video differed between 25% and 400, while 400 means um, the bot would watch it four times. And again, we saw a very strong influence um, of the video re rate on the TikTok recommendation system. And in particular, what's interesting is that the feed difference increased stronger for persona scenarios than for all others, so for the randomly ones. And we figured that the niche, uh, the more niche those personas would be, the better. So this kind of aligns with our like feature results. And um, also something interesting is that the hashtag similarity analysis revealed that the feeds of a higher percentage. So the longer a user would watch a video, the faster its feed would become similar. So the faster TikTok would pick up the user's interest. Um, finally, I would like to conclude our results basically um, answer our hypothesis I introduced you before. So one and two, we can accept because as I just showed you in the results, the feeds do become more different as one of the, as, as the active user continues, um, it does interact with its feed and continues to do so. And then we can also accept hypothesis three because um, that does exist in order of um, the least and most influential factor will basically certain factors are more influential than others and i just as i just mentioned we saw a strong influence of following specific content creators this was the strongest um then followed by watching certain videos longer than others and liking was the least most influential from those we excluded location language from from this one then again hypothesis four we could also accept this one because the similarity analysis revealed that in most cases the feeds of the active users would actually become a lot fast become similar a lot faster than for its control use as i just showed you with the view re rate unfortunately we we had to reject hypothesis five because we noticed that the posts um, that a user would see do not become more popular or less popular as the active user would engage with its feed so this was not the case as we anticipated um, and then last but not least um, the hypothesis six could also be accepted because the language and location do does affect um, the content recommended to a user. As I mentioned, location does it stronger. So um, as I mentioned before, in, in the order of the most influential factors, we were surprised to see that the follow feature was the strongest, in particular because we figured in the beginning um, of our research um, on TikTok, that it would act, that it actually differs from other social media platforms like Instagram or Facebook in the sense that content is heavily distributed solely by algorithms, which is different to to uh, Instagram or Facebook, where it's also very strongly based on the user's social network. So this was surprising. Then also that the video rate was very similar in their in its importance to liking which we kind of find problematic because it is easy to unlike a video, but it's very hard to unwatch a video. And um, since there's also very problematic um, content on TikTok, it is kind of diff it's kind of a problem that certain videos could receive unintentional attention and too much of this unintentional attention. And then might I um, point, pinpoint the recommendation system to a wrong direction to which the user would actually, to which the user didn't want to go. So we um, propose that actually TikTok should provide more control over the inferred user interest to every individual user. And then also our ana analysis revealed that there exist filter bubbles um, in TikTok as for many other social media platforms. And um, TikTok should definitely try to countermeasure these with more serendipitous recommendations. Yeah. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you very much for this presentation. We uh, we have a few minutes. Uh, if anyone has a question and would like to post it in the chat. Meanwhile, I would like to uh, to ask one question. So, 
what was the length mm -hmm. of the study in time and uh, could the effect that you see uh, fade out if uh, you sustained um, the study on a, on a longer time? Does it reflect like recent interest and is this due to the length of the study so, or yeah? Yes, yeah, so, so the study was we conducted or collected data about for two to three months oh. um, over that time period. And um, in particular, this um, this effect that I just described of having watched the video for too long and then maybe being directed to a wrong direction. We also propose that uh, for future work, it would be really interesting if it's uh, possible for a user to kind of uh, try to catch the recommendation system and drive it towards another direction again. So kind of getting out of the filter bubble, going into another direction again. So you would say that throughout the duration of the study, you saw those filter bubble uh, last? Yes, at least for the time we did, yeah. And um, so some platforms have um, mechanisms that users can, can use to indicate that they are not interested in, um, in certain content, mm -hmm. hide it or say that it's not relevant to them. Um, have you tested some of these and would that alter some of the recommendations? And uh, we did not test that particular feature, which was also on our list. It is possible for, um, specifically on the mobile application from TikTok that you can say, I'm not interested in this content. And what we also figured is that there does exist a certain list of inferred interest or kind of categories a user might be interested. So you can access the, that list through the settings, but we didn't see that for, for the inferred interest in general, because this was particular only for advertisement. So TikTok was uh, provided the user with the possibility to say to in which advertisement are you most interested in, but it didn't, re it didn't really do it for, for overall the entire content. It was particular only for advertisement. And that's why we proposed, and um, this should also exist for content in general.